So now we're on the clock. Hi guys, this is Connie. Back for some more Connie Reads the Dogs of Winter. The baby is currently napping and this book is due today. So we have less than like eight or 10 chapters to go. Here's Connie Reads chapter 47 titled Hunted. I dug through the garbage cans in the Ferris wheel park. For the first time in weeks, the cans were full. Perhaps the garbage men were once again on strike. Perhaps there had been a holiday I had forgotten about. I had forgotten many things in my years of living with the dogs. I remembered the old woman asking me how old I was. I couldn't say. Six, seven. Was my birthday in the late spring or early summer? <clears throat> Rip trotted along beside me as I crossed the place where the people had danced on the long summer evenings. I think I am seven now, I said. I could even be almost eight. I like the sound of being eight. Eight-year-olds got to do many things five-year-olds did not. A shadow swept across the concrete. I stopped. Was it just a, a cloud passing across the face of the full moon? There he is, someone shouted. Rip growled. Militia came from everywhere. I crouched and growled. A voice I recognized as the old woman's son said, take it slow, don't scare him off. I dropped my bags of food and backed away from the men. The old woman's son held out a hand to me. It's okay, boy, we're here to help you. I looked from the men to the side of the park with the duck pond. That was where the other dogs had gone in search of ratch. rats. I threw back my head and howled. Rip joined in. One of the men laughed. We should take him to the circus instead of the orphanage. Shut up, the son snapped. Then he stepped closer and said, come now, I have a nice lolly for a good boy. I pulled back my lips and snarled, even as I felt the other dogs circling quietly behind me. One of the policemen said, let's just use the net and be done with it. The old woman's son nodded his head ever so slightly. My heart pounded in my chest. It was time to run. I flicked my hand. Moon, star, smoke, lucky, little mother, and of course, Rip, surged forward, snapping and snarling. Holy mother of God, one of the militia cried. Look how many! Smoke and Lucky drew themselves up tall with their tails held high and stiff. Smoke, Smoke's eyes glowed yellow and cold in the moonlight. What are we supposed to do now? The policeman with the net asked, stepping back. Smoke and Lucky lowered their uh, ha haunches and gathered their muscles ready to spring. Run, Malkik! I ran and ran and ran as fast as I could. The sound of snarling and screaming and shouting and yelping grew fainter. A sick feeling rose from my stomach and filled my lungs. Soon, I heard the running feet of the dogs behind me. They ran swift and silent in the moonlight. I listened over my hammering heart for the sound of boots. The dogs splashed through the stream and into the birch grove. I counted as they came. One, two, three, four. There were only four. I whistled low. The dogs gathered around me. Lucky, little mother, moon, star. Where were Smoke and Rip? Of course, how could I be so stupid? Rip couldn't run as fast as the rest. Smoke must be with him. Stay here, I said. I touched Lucky's head. You come, I said. We ran the way we came, through the stream and past the big birch tree and across the small meadow. Soon we would be at the road to the Ferris wheel park. I heard running boots and heavy breathing. Someone called, I can't see a thing. Lucky woofed low and raised his tail. Into the moonlight meadow ran Rip with smoke. I dashed across the meadow and scooped Rip up in my arms. The sound of boots grew closer. Car hordes honked. Someone cursed. Run, I said to Smoke and Luggy. The others are ahead. Lucky dashed off into the forest. Smoke said, I will stay. No, I said, run. I ran as fast as I could, Rip bouncing in my arms. Smoke ran next to me. He threw his ears back. They come. I stopped and looked around. I spotted just what I needed. A pine rose tall and black in the moonlight. Run, I said. I, heard, I hurried to the bottom of the great pine. I pulled myself up with one hand while the other clutched ripped to my chest. He kept perfectly still. I worked down. I could just see the eyes of smoke watching from beneath a cluster of bushes. I bowed my head against Rip's ragged ear. Shh, 
I whispered as I tried to quiet my breathing. The militia entered the clearing. One limped and another had a torn sleeve. Yet another held a hand to his chest as if it were injured. The old woman's son had lost his hat. They panted in the cold night air. Rip trembled against me. Now where? One of the men grumbled. It's crazy hunting that kid in the forest at night. We can't see a thing, another said. We'll have to come back in the daylight, the woman's son agreed. The man with the limp said, and just where are we going to look? Do you know how many hundreds of acres this forest is? He could be anywhere. The woman's son lit a cigarette. The other men followed suit. The bomb sea over at the dump gave me a pretty good idea where he and those dogs live out there. All I know is the policeman with the hurt hand said, we won't be able to get that kid with the dogs protecting him. There are always ways to deal with them, the old woman's son replied. Bah, one of the men said. Why are we even bothering with him? There's lots of these street kids and no one cares. The son of the woman in the hat tightened his scarf around his neck. It's not just my mother driving me crazy now. She's got all her old crones riled up about it, all because he lives with those dogs. He coughed and spat on the ground. Let's get out of this damned cold. I stayed in the tree long after the militia left. Smoke crept from under the thicket and followed their trail. After a bit, he returned and barked the all clear. I lowered myself and ripped to the ground. My legs and arms shook. My face bled from the tree scratches. I stroked Rip's ears. You were the best boy. I was tired, so tired. I half slept on my feet as smoke led us back a different way to our home beneath the tree. As we entered our meadow, the rest of the pack hurried out to meet us, whining and licking and sniffing us all over. We crawled beneath the tree and piled together. The heat from the dog's bodies slowly stopped my shivering. We, we will rest now, I said, but we must leave very early in the morning and go back to the city. They will not find us there. There, we would be just one of many fleas upon the dog. And that's the end of chapter 47. Be careful with that and enjoy. Please and thank you, and I will see you for the next installment. Bye.